Hi, I'm Irving, and I have no life, just like you. Tom Clancy is known for bringing us big stories from around the world. This one was no exception. We remember Sam Fisher from the first Splinter Cell game. He's back with his team of Irving Lambert, gotta love that name, and Anna Grimm's daughter, known as Grimm because most Americans can't say Grimm's daughter. The latest crisis is happening in Indonesia. A group of guerrilla soldiers led by Suadi Sedono has taken over the American embassy in Dili to protest the installation of an American military base in East Timor. Sam's job is to get into the embassy and rescue the hostages if possible. But more important, his old friend Douglas Shetland is in there, and he has some vital information about the whole thing. Working your way into the embassy gives you the chance to go through a tutorial on the controls. Some have been revamped a little since the first game, and for the most part the changes are good ones. For example, in the first game you'd press the Start button to access your OPSAT, which is more than a little confusing since the Start button is usually what you use to quit the game. In Pandora Tomorrow you use the Back button. Eventually that became more or less standard on the 360 controller, which is fine with me. Also, when you jump up to crawl along a pipe or beam, you use the Y button, which is your general jump button. But in the first game, to pull your legs up, you'd use the B button. I don't really know why, but in this one, to pull your legs up, you press Y again. Then when you're ready to get down, you use the B button, which is the crouch and down button. It makes a lot more sense. There's only one bit of confusion in the new setup, especially if you go straight from the first game to this one. In the first game, you use the right bumper to access your weapon inventory and switch items. Now that's on the left bumper. If you forget and hit the right bumper, you whistle at the bad guys. Unless you're either trying to lure one to a particular spot so you can deal with him, or you think he's cute and you're flirting with him, you don't want to do that. I don't know how many times I got killed because I hit the wrong one. But that just takes practice and a little less absent-mindedness, an area in which I apparently don't tend to excel. Several other things have been changed. You don't carry med kits anymore. They're mounted on walls here and there and you have to find them to heal yourself. That's bad because you can't always find one when you need it, but it's good because they can be used more than once. You have the option to restore all or part of your health. Why? What kind of idiot goes to the emergency room and says, I have these massive cuts on both arms, but just treat the one on the left for now. I don't get it. One very good improvement is the option to use your optical cable every time you come up to a door. In the first game, you had to select it from your gadgets to use it. Now, when you come to a door, you get a multiple choice menu. Open the door or use the optical cable. Also, in the first game, your optical cable was always in night vision mode, which is something I never understood. Now you have all three visual modes available. Regular, night vision, and thermal vision. Very nice. You also have zoomable binoculars that you can access with the click of the right stick. When you put your rifle into sniper mode, you can change the zoom of your scope, too. Sam can still only hold his breath for three seconds, which is another thing I don't understand. Since we never see him doing it, he must do his chain smoking in his closet or something. Your pistol is as inaccurate as ever, even though you have the option of using a laser sight. The laser sight should improve accuracy, but you pretty much never get to use it because enemies can see it and it gets you killed. So as usual, the main thing you use your pistol for is shooting out lights. Your night vision has changed too. When a beam of light hits you in the face, your goggles wash out and go blank for a second or two. Much more realistic, but sometimes bothersome. There's a lot less contrast in the grays of stuff you see through them too, so they're not always as helpful as they could be. But they beat being blind and you'll use them a lot. While you're going through the tutorial on your way to the embassy, you're introduced to the voice of D.B. Brunton, some sort of consultant who's working with Lambert and Grimm on this mission. He makes a few comments and Sam's reply is classic. The Joint Chiefs want this mission kept non-lethal and alarms at flat zero. We can't endanger the hostages. Understood. And with some due respect, leave anything Lambert can say to Lambert. I don't want the voices in my head to become a crowd. About those voices in your head? Don't answer them. That's what they want. Even worse, for most of the missions, Lambert's and especially Grimm's job seems to be denoting the obvious. 
Most of the time for Grimm, this takes the form of repeating the alarm messages that the bad guys have announced. Alarm stage two. Fisher, if you remain a ghost, the alarm stage will decrease. Security stage decreased. Security stage back to normal. Okay, it seems they've gone back to normal. I'm doing it. I'm repeating the darn computer. Every time you trigger an alarm, Lambert has to give you a first grade level lecture on the importance of stealth. Fisher, ah. you need to be a ghost. You're putting the mission in danger. I really don't know what's going on here. Maybe the actor's contracts required a certain number of lines, or maybe it's just bad writing. But it really gets comical after a while. Then it gets irritating. The game is worth putting up with it, but I'm glad they got it out of their systems before the third game. You're under a strict no fatality order, so you have to be careful and sneak up behind guys so you can interrogate them and knock them out. When you find Shetland, one of the bad guys is beating him up. You take care of that guy and talk to Shetland. Please don't kill me. Douglas, it's been a while. Fisher? My God, man, you're getting old. You still in one oh. piece? Where are the rest of the seals? I'm working alone. Haven't been Navy for a decade. Then who you with? I'm here on damage control. Just came to smash your computer. Thank God. Oh, should I say the CIA? Keep guessing. I tried to destroy it, but who knows how much data they were able to pull down. I've consulted on security for targets all over the world. Who do you work for? Delta? No. Staying anonymous. Uh-huh. Maybe you've got a use for this storage device I pulled off the gorilla I killed. Thanks. How'd you hide it from your guard? Just wash your hands when you're done with it. Ew! The text on it looks like gibberish, but Brunton figures out that it's some kind of Timorese dialect. There's a translator in the complex, a woman named Ingrid Carlson. So your next task is to find her, ride in on your white horse, and free her from the soldiers guarding her. Ooh, I hope she's a babe. So, through the building, past some more guards, then on to a courtyard. Lambert tells you there's a guard in the tower where Ingrid is, and he's watching the courtyard with night vision goggles. But there's an automated searchlight sweeping the area, and it should be blinding to him with those goggles on. So, for this one time, Sam has to stay in the light. Based on the course you have to take to follow it, I think this automated searchlight is drunk. But that light going on and off in the second floor across the way, there's a good chance that's her. So you meet Ingrid. Ingrid. You must be my blind date. I hope the bit with the flashlight helped. It did, thanks. Oh, mama? She will be mine. Oh yes, she will be mine. Yep, definitely a babe. I'm doing the best I can. This hasn't turned out to be the desk job I was hired for. I'm a word cruncher. Word crunching's what I need, look. Nice PDA. Are you saving up for the color model? Can you read it? It's phonetical mambe. Not a native speaker, but fluent. Gives numbers for a meeting place. 4857 North. 0308 East. 18 hours. The only reference to the location is Solnier. That's not mambe. It says they're only a few weeks from securing the uh, ingredients for the Springfield demonstration. And that's it. It's signed, Mortified Penguin. Mortified Penguin? 
I think anybody who hears that name agrees it would be a good name for a rock band. Lambert comes on and tells you how to get to extraction, and since Delta Force is coming in to liberate the place, you're off the leash. You can shoot bad guys if you want to. It makes me want to go back through that other building and pop a few guys, but I restrained myself. That mission's done, now it's off to Paris to find Mortified Penguin. And if you can say that with a straight face, you're doing better than I am. You're finding your way into a cryogenic place in Paris called Saulnier, where they freeze people who don't want to die. You can get your whole body frozen, or you can go the economy route and just have your brain frozen. Okay... The containers they put brains into are called ND-133s. Sedano's contact is apparently stealing these containers. What happens to... I knew I probably shouldn't ask. Meanwhile, the gorillas are going around destroying all the computers in the place, so you have to stop them and access the security files so Grimm can sort it all out. By listening in on the enemy's radio chatter, you find out that a guard in the place managed to get a picture of Sedano's contact with his cell phone. He's holed up in a secure room with the bad guys trying to find their way in. I am not making this up. We're in a cold storage place, and this guy's name is Francois Coldbeuf. That's sort of a bastardized French for cold beef. And here I thought I was the king of bad puns. I'm not here to add to your troubles. Are you badly hurt? No. I'm living, I think. You are? I'm from the phone company. There's been a recall. What? I'm going to need to take your telephone. I... I'm very confused. Give me the phone, Francis. From the picture on the phone, Grimm identifies the guy as Norman Soth, an American who may or may not be a CIA asset. Once you've talked to Francois, you have to wait in a safe place until the bad guys outside the room set off an explosion, because that explosion opens up your way out. Unfortunately, you can't take Mr. Coldebuff with you, so the explosion puts him on ice permanently. Oh. Yes! I am the king of bad puns! Yes! I am invincible! In the next mission, Soth has been located on a bullet train crossing France. Your Osprey puts you down on top of it, where you have to get in, work your way through, climb down through a hatch and shinny along a pipe on the underside of the train, locate Soth, hack his laptop, record a phone conversation, get back to the top of the train and snag a rope from the Osprey, pretty much all without being detected. I'm out of my frickin' mind. 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 You locate Soth in one of the compartments by using your thermal goggles because he has a fake leg. No, Soth. Soth claims to be doing a CIA job, but lies about who his handler is. So, we still don't know if he's a good guy or a bad guy. But we get some info about something called a Springfield Demonstration, apparently a terrorist act aimed at the U.S. You follow Soth and catch his end of a phone conversation with Sedano. From that, and from hacking Soth's laptop while he's off taking the phone call, we find out that Soth is connected to the purchase of some biological material from a supplier in Jerusalem. So, once Sam is off the train, that'll be his next stop. This mission is pretty short, but it really highlights the whole stealth aspect of the game. And at the end of it, you do get to exchange a few bullets with some bad guys if you feel like it. So it's a lot of fun. In Jerusalem, you can have a brief conversation with Cohen, then you're off to retrieve your SC-20K rifle. A local gunsmith has made some modifications to it, which is why you can't just take it with you. You can't be detected at all, so if even one of the 21,840 cops patrolling the streets sees you, it's mission failure. And I'm sorry, but I really have trouble taking these cops seriously. Check this out. 
He looks like one of the village people. It's not that hard to get past them and a few jumpy civilians, but when you get to the guy's shop, there are a couple of punks trying to rob him. Brunton comes on the radio. He's been taking obviousness lessons from Grimm because he says, We have no choice. We need to have them dead. Why didn't he just say kill them? Because he's a bureaucrat. They never use one word where five will do. Incidentally, want to know just how bad your pistol is? Watch this. Enemy agent. Ah! You see where my sight is, right? And you see where the shots are going. WTF? Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. Okay, that was too easy. Back to the game. So you take these guys out and Saul, the gunsmith, gives you your rifle. Now you can follow him to a secluded spot where you can try it out and get to know the modifications he's made. I calibrated the optics on your scope. I think you'll like the effect. Of course, it's still sensitive as a butterfly's wing. You'll probably have to hold your breath to get a steady shot. I'm sure these modifications mean something to Sam, but for your purposes, they're meaningless. At least, I can't really see any difference in how it behaves. But, now that you're fully equipped, you're off to meet a member of the Israeli intelligence organization Shin Bet. I don't actually know anything about them, or if they were a real organization when this was made, but apparently they're a little scary. Sam asks, who are we going to torture? Your contact's name is Dahlia Tal. Time to go find her. Okay, it's time to gripe a little. The program gives you a checkpoint just before you get into Saul's place where the thieves are in his face. You have to get past a buttload of cops to get to the place Saul is leading you, and of course, half the time they can see you even though you're in pitch darkness. The instant they see you, the mission's over. That means you have to take out the two thieves again, meet Saul again, collect your rifle, and get the instructions about Dahlia Tal again. Why the hell isn't the checkpoint after all that setup stuff? It makes no sense at all. But considering how touchy things are in this mission, you can expect to have to rescue Saul and all the rest several times before you can move on. Hey programmers, it's called logic. Try it sometime. So with no directions where to go, how to get there, or even how to find Dahlia, you're off to find Dahlia. Once you actually get to where she is, Grimm comes on the line and tells you where she'll be and what she's wearing. Thanks, Grimm. You have to follow her through more streets, past half a dozen cops, the usual stuff, until she meets a cop who says he's going to escort her home. She tries to protest, he insists, and she does this. That really won't be necessary. What legs? <clears throat> for some reason, she seems to blame Sam for what just happened, so he has to take to the rooftops. She says he can get to them over there. Over where? She doesn't point, doesn't give any indication of where over there is, she just walks off. So you have to wander around like an idiot to figure out where over there is. Of course, it's about a block away in an opposite direction to where she went, and you have to go through somebody's apartment to get there. If you're careful, these people are so intent on watching the TV, they'll never know you use their living room as a thoroughfare, but it's a little silly. Then you finally get up on the roof, and you use the rooftops for exactly one building. You rappel down again and catch up with Dahlia in a warehouse, where you get into a freight elevator to go down and get a sample of the contagion that Soth is peddling. Fisher, we need Dahlia Tal dead. Kill her. Don't think, just do it. You have a choice here. You can do it, or you can refuse, and the elevator will take off, leaving her standing there. This is one of the truly interesting parts of the game. The final part of this level will be different depending on whether you shoot her or not. My recommendation? Play it through one way, then go back and repeat the level doing it the other way. I'm not going to say any more than that because it's worth the effort to find out. You get a checkpoint as you're going down the elevator. Now, Brunton tells you the leash is off. You can shoot bad guys down here, and you'll need to. As quick as the elevator stops, Three of them are on you and you have to shoot fast. You make your way past several more and get to an armory of sorts where you can pick up a ton of ammunition and gadgets, most of which you'll never use. There's also a med kit in here and after that elevator ride you probably need it. So you get into the lab and get the sample. Lambert commends you and says now we have to see what's inside it.
I could open it. And you could play Russian roulette with a clip-loading pistol. Where's your sense of humor? We got a CIA analyst waiting with Cohen. Man by the name of Bellagio Sampler. Bellagio Sampler? You asked where my sense of humor was. Now you have to get out of there, which means, hey, no checkpoint? But we're at a major transition. Shouldn't there be a checkpoint after you get the sample? Well, okay, maybe it comes after you get out of there. So you take out a bunch more guards and get on another elevator. Checkpoint. Huh? No checkpoint. What? Now you have to get past a bunch more cops and stuff and find your extraction point. And you get to do all this without a single checkpoint? What the hell? Now, here's the really weird part. When you locate Dahlia for the first time, you get a checkpoint. Then you have a conversation with her, and lo and behold, you get another checkpoint. That's two within about two minutes. But we have to go through this entire underground bit, then work our way to extraction while we're back on the leash, all without a checkpoint anywhere? Okay, wait a minute. On my third time through, it offered me a checkpoint the moment I picked up the sample. So maybe it's just a little buggy. Or maybe one of the automatic updates I had to install on my 360 did what most Microsoft fixes do, improved it to the point where it doesn't work at all. Whatever the cause, if you don't make it out, you'll have to listen to the little conversation about Bellagio sampler and stuff again and again. I find myself wondering how much alcohol went into choosing the locations of the checkpoints in this level. Getting out of there and to the extraction point is going to take several tries. Why? Because as usual, the moment you do the least little thing, the bad guys can see you and shoot you to bits even when you're in pitch darkness. And of course, once you get outside, there are big construction lights that you can't shoot out, fires burning in barrels, and cops all over the place. It can be done, but it's a headache. This is one of my least favorite levels in the game. When you finally do get out of there, you learn that the sample is a strain of smallpox. SOS ND133 containers are portable coolers that make it easy to carry the virus just about anywhere, reasonably undetected. Not good. Somehow, we find out that Pandora Tomorrow is a code that Sedano uses in daily phone calls to tell his agents not to release the virus. If he doesn't make the call, that means he's been killed or detained, so release it. We don't know how many agents there are out there waiting for the calls, so the U.S. goes on a massive campaign of smallpox vaccination. Of course, this makes all the conspiracy theorists in the world come out of the woodwork and start trying to initiate a nationwide panic. Meanwhile, Sam is back on the Osprey, heading toward Indonesia to try and intercept Sedano's call so we can see how many there are and where they're going. On the plane, Grim is trying to patch him through so he can talk to his daughter Sarah, but she's unable to. Sam finally says, I don't know what I'd say to her anyway. Huh? Of course he can't tell her what's going on or warn her about a potential biological attack, but how about, hi Sarah, I love you and I miss you. Big plot hole. But when you get right down to it, in the first three games, Sarah is nothing but a plot hole waiting to happen anyway. And when we see the direction that the story takes in Double Agent, we find ourselves wishing Sam hadn't had any family at all. Maybe the story would have stayed on a more palatable course. But I digress. You get dropped near a guerrilla camp where Sedano has been hanging out, and you find out that your friend Shetland is also watching the place. He has snipers placed all around the perimeter of the compound, and they would all be more than happy to rearrange Sedano's skull. They would also love to know why they can't but Sam can't tell Shetland. One thing we've learned is that Sedano has been working with the heroin producers and smugglers around the Golden Triangle, helping them to move their product as a way to fund his other activities. So your first task is to plant a bomb on his personal plane and put a stop to that. Then you need to trail him through the compound until you can get a handle on his phone calls about Pandora tomorrow. So you make your way into the camp, neutralize a couple of guards, and start along a path through the jungle toward the plane. You come upon a couple of guys who are apparently checking mines that have been placed along the path. This is worth showing in its entirety. Come on, I'm about to drive and blow away. We've gone through three bottles on a 12-hour shift. So go and get another bottle. Hell no, I don't want to get blown up. And why are my chances any better than yours? Because you helped lay the traps. Not all of them. Besides, they're easy to spot. Just look for the trip wires. 
can't look for tripwires. I'm drunk. I drank as much as you did. So that should make you braver. Remember, you need to fix the broken mind. Yeah, I'll do it now. Be careful, man. So once they're out of the way, you start down the path trying to watch for tripwires. You can do it that way, or you can use your thermal goggles to scope out where the mines themselves are. Either way, you need to disable the mines as you go. Getting past the guards around the plane is pretty easy, and you can plant the bomb in pretty short order. Brunt and the bureaucrat is as useful as ever. You should be closest to Donna's plane, Fisher. Really? Duh! He's looking right at it, genius. Didn't Sam already tell him to shut up at least once? Too bad he can't take a hint. You move on from there past a security gate where you meet a guard with a dog. Fortunately, sticky shockers work as well on dogs as they do on humans, because no matter how you do it, if you shoot the dog, the guy will be alerted and raise an alarm. But if you use your two sticky shockers to take down both him and the dog, you're on your way. You come to a settlement, Take a few guards out, then climb a tower and use a zip line to get into the compound proper. Time to find Sedano. The idea is that you get close enough to put a sticky camera near him and record his conversation. Why? Because he changes the code to his house door every day and tells it to his henchmen during this meeting that you're supposed to record. For reasons that are totally incomprehensible, you can't just grab one of the henchmen and make him tell you the code. You have to use the sticky cam. Use the sticky cam to overhear those conversations. Details on your opsat. You can use your sticky cam to overhear the code. <laughs> this part is intensely frustrating. Why? First, because your sight isn't worth a damn all of a sudden. Three times I shot a guy right in the face from about ten feet away using the scoped rifle and missed. And of course, with the pistol you can't hit the side of a barn from the inside. Then there's another dog that comes out of nowhere. But it's worst when you actually catch up with Sedano. For Christ's sake, Fisher. The mission is over. Note that Lambert just suddenly came on the line and told you the mission is over. But he didn't tell you why. The screen just says, Opportunity Missed. How? What did you do wrong? What didn't you do? It tells you not a damn thing. Apparently, that was the place where you're supposed to shoot a sticky cam near them and record the conversation. How are you supposed to know that? Sedano has stopped twice ahead of you already talking to guys, but somehow you're just supposed to know that this is the right stop in conversation. Lambert doesn't tell you that and Grin doesn't repeat it. Maybe that last part is a good thing anyway. But it's back to the last checkpoint with the dog and all that. And the next time I did it, I put the sticky cam right in the middle of him, but it must not have been just the right spot because I got a mission failure again. I don't get it. To figure it out and get past this bit of absurdity, you have to keep screwing around with it, killing those same two guys and the dog over and over and over and over until you accidentally get it right. When you finally do get it right, you're off to find Sedano's residence. Naturally, you'll take the most complex and roundabout way possible to get there. So you work your way along and find yourself going underground to where Sedano's people are refining heroin. Both Grimm and Lambert have to tell you that you're going to be out of contact for a while. Thank God for small favors. Grimm tells you good luck with your airplane pilot. Huh? Airplane pilot? How did the pilot get into this? Well, if you notice the little flashing envelope in the lower right corner of the screen, that means there's something new on your opsat. Out of the blue, and with nobody telling you a damn thing about it, you're supposed to meet with the pilot of that plane you just planted the bomb on. Why? Because he's CIA and he's got some information for you about the whole smuggling thing in Sedano's Golden Triangle contacts. Where the hell did that come from? So you meet him and he gives you a name. You make your way back to the surface, where Lambert can't wait to start bending your ear again. Brunton sounds like a little kid in a candy store. Did you get the name? Huh? Huh? Did you? Did you? Huh? Huh? Lambert tells him to shut up. Sam's mission is to tap Sedano's phone, and we'll talk about names later. Somebody pulled that whole thing out of their ass, and it's never mentioned again. 
We're out of time for today, so join us next week when we'll figure out where Sedano's calls are going, track down Sedano himself, find out where Soth fits into all this, have Grimm and Lambert nag us even more, and get to ogle the lovely Ingrid some more. That last part is definitely my favorite. Until then, I'm Irving, and I have no life, just like you. You also have zoomable monocu- <laughs> That is not easy to say. So your next tap. <laughs> Hack his laptop. Reform. <laughs> yeah. Who was that? That was Sarah. <laughs>